This call is being recorded. Welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition for May 7, 2017. Let us go now to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. We praise you, God, because it was you that woke us up this morning, clothed us in our right minds, and gave us a reasonable portion of health and strength. We lift you up, God, and give you all the praise because we recognize and realize you are God and you're God all by yourself. We love you and we praise you. We ask you now, dear Heavenly Father, as we get ready to study your word in this Sunday school session on this conference call and on Facebook Live, that you anoint afresh, dear Heavenly Father. Bless this technology. Bless those that are listening, Lord, that we might be not only hearers of your word, but doers of your word. Anoint this word, Lord, as only you can, that someone might be strengthened, that someone might, might find direction, that someone, the Heavenly Father, that might be listening to this now or listening to this recording later, might be saved. And we'll be careful, the Heavenly Father, to give you all the praise and all the glory and all of the honor. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Uh, today's lesson is a very familiar lesson. Very familiar. I don't think I'm going to say anything uh, uh, so profound that you haven't heard before as far as the the text is concerned. It is a straightforward text, but we're going to look at it today. We're going to be talking about Jonah. Oh, Lord. Yeah, yeah. We've heard the story of Jonah. I don't care if you've been in church or out of church. If you grew up in church or you grew up in the streets, everybody has heard the story about Jonah. Jonah and the big fish. And, and when we was kids, we we would have theological arguments, whether it was a big fish or a whale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the scripture simply says it was a big fish. Hallelujah. So we're going to look at the uh, seventh, uh, I mean, the chapter one of the book of Jonah. The book of Jonah. Jonah is an Old Testament minor prophet. And we're going to be looking at, at uh his life, his times, and, and what was going on during that particular time. So turn with me, turn with me to Jonah. Turn with me to Jonah, and we're going to read verses 17, I me mean 7 through 17, and I'm going to read it out of a New King James version of the Bible. I, I want to read it out of that if I could find it real quick. <laughs> I thought I had it up already. I want to do it out of a New King James Version of the Bible. A little bit of smoother translation, if you will. Um, a lot of less these and thou's. And our lesson starts at verse 7 of chapter 1. And it reads as follows. And they said unto one another, Come, let us cast lots that we may know for, for who caused whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots and a lot fell on Jonah. Then they said unto him, please tell us for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? And what do, and when do you come and where do you come from? What is your country? And, 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 and what people are you? So he said unto them, I, I, I'm a Hebrew. I fear the Lord, the, the God of heaven, who made the heavens, made, made the seas and the dry land. Jonah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then they said to him, what shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us? For the sea was growing more tumultuous. 
And he said to them, pick me up, throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. Nevertheless, the men rode harder, trying to return to land, but they could not. For the sea continued to grow more tumultuous against them. Therefore, they cried out to the Lord and said, we pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life and do not change us, do not charge us, excuse me, with innocent blood for, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea. And the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. Verse 17. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Amen. Amen. So that is our text. Our, our key verse is, is, is verse 17. And, and it reads, now, now Jonah, I mean, uh, now the Lord, excuse me, had prepared a great fish and, and to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of that fish three days and three nights. Um, this, 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 this verse, this verse is, is, is dealing with Jesus, I mean, God, excuse me, Preparing a huge fish for Jonah and, and the sailors throwing him overboard. And, and instead of him drowning in the sea, the fish swallowed him up. God protected Jonah. He survived in the belly of a fish. Well, well this, this, this text, this text, this, it, we could talk about it from Jonah and I, and I got it on Facebook as Jonah tried to run, but, but, but we want to concentrate on it from a different standpoint than just Jonah tried to run. We want to talk about it from God's love sets us straight. God's love sets us straight. And, 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 and so when we look at this, we're going to see this key concept in the midst of this text. God loves us and will set us straight when we do wrong. When we do whatever we want to do, he will be there for us. And so my keys for kids are this. The keys for kids is Jonah, number one, disobeyed God and tried to run away. Number two, uh, um, where is my two? Oh, my two didn't show up on my paper here. Let me go to my text. Number two. Number two, uh, we cannot run or hide from God. And number three, even when we disobey, God still has a plan for us. So let, let me go over those again, them keys for kids, because that's, that's really what this lesson is all about. Jonah disobeyed God and tried to run away. Two, we cannot run or hide from God. And even when we are disobedient, God still has a plan for us. Yes, yes, yes. That's 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 the keys for kids. And now for 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 the the deep folks, we're gonna talk about this, these lesson facts. We're gonna describe the action of this prophet Jonah and, and, and the consequences of his actions. And then we're going to look at to uh, from the biblical principle to explore God's sustaining love, which directs us as well as strengthen believers to heed his call. And then our daily application is that we want to let God be our GPS. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we want God to give us directions in every aspect of our lives. He, he is our global uh, positioning <laughs> satellite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, God, God will, 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 will 
Yes, he will. He will direct us and give us guidance. Hallelujah. Amen. The background of this text is that Jonah name means dove. And y'all know, many of you know, I love some doves. I got doves flying in the backyard right now as I'm even speaking. Uh, his name means dove. And, you know, when we think of the dove, we think of the symbolizing peace. We think of the dove symbolizing the Holy Spirit. Uh, 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 so, 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 so he, his name is, is all about peace. And he was from this town called Gehefer, Gehefer, uh, which is about three miles northeast of Nazareth. And, and Jonah was called to be a prophet. He had a prophetic ministry and, and, and his prophetic ministry was during the time of the reign of, uh, Jehoabam the second and and uh, he he predicted the victory over Syria and the, and the Lord's ex expansion of the uh, Israelites border. Now now God had given Jonah an assignment. Jonah was told to go to Nineveh, and God told him and and and, and this is up in verse two of this chapter. God told him, say, rise and go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come before me. Nineveh, Nineveh was, was the, the, the capital of Assyria. And Assyria uh, was, was the, 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 the uh, great city that was uh, originally uh, uh, done by, uh, what is Nimrod? Nimrod was the one who created Assyria and, and, and Nineveh in this, in this entire area. If today's world, it's, it's all over by the Tigris River, uh, Tigris River, uh, 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 a modern city, city we call Mosul. And uh, so here it was, if you read the book of Naaman, uh, Nahum, excuse me, Nahum, um, he talks about how sinful this city is. And how evil um, they were plotting against God. And how prostitution and witchcraft and, and, and uh, commercial and corporate exportation is going on. So all of this stuff is going on in, in, in Nineveh. And, and God is at a point where he's heard the people crying. He's heard the evil going on. And he's sending a prophet. He's sending a prophet to speak a word to an evil place. But this prophet, this prophet, Jonah, he heard God tell him what to do. He heard God tell him where to go. But instead, it tells us up in verse 3 that he rose and fled to Tarsus. And when he got to Tarsus, he went down to Joppa. And when he went down to Joppa, he found the ship going to Tarsus and, and, and he paid his fare and, and he got on the ship. And when he got on this ship, it says that God sent a great wind on the sea. God did this. Nobody else. This he, You can't blame the devil. You can't, can't well, God, I, I'm trying to do this and the devil is, uh, no, this ain't the devil. Got nothing to do with this. This is man, Jonah, being disobedient and God sending trouble his way to put him back on track. Oh, I know that's, that's some theology that some folks don't want to hear because we so quick to blame in the devil on everything and anything that's going on. We want to blame the devil. Yeah, every time something go wrong. But there are times when we make bad decisions. There are times where our actions causes God to have to do things to get us back on track. And he will even use a storm. God will even use trouble. That's why when we hear Romans 8.28, for we know 
all things work together for good for them that are called according to God's purpose, for them of us who love God and are called according to his purpose. God sent the wind. And I always like the fact when I think about the wind, because Jesus made an illustration about the wind when he was talking to Nebuchadnezzar, uh, I mean Nicodemus. He told Nicodemus, the spirit is like the wind. You don't know where it comes from and you don't know where he's going. And, and that, that's how the spirit is. And so the wind, he said, you know, I, I think about this. God sent his spirit. He's trying to direct him into the right path in which he should go. And so now we pick up our text. They're in the ship and the wind is blowing and he's with all of these men and these men that they, that are uh, uh, the captain and and the crew of the ship that he's on uh, are, are all uh, heathens. They they are not godly men. So when the when the when the storm came, they got to pray to their gods, their different pagan gods, and, and and they got to praying and they got to praying, and they didn't get no answer. The sea kept roaring, the storm kept raging. The the the, the so what they decided to do was. We're going to try to find out what's going on. So they cast lots. They cast lots. And, 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 this, and this storm is going on, and, and they trying to find the cause of the storm, so they cast lots. Meaning that they, 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 they like, you know, in our day, they, they took some straws, and whoever pulled the shortest straw, they said, it's you the one that's the problem. That, that's how they did this. And when they, when, they, when they did it, it came up that Jonah pulled a short straw. Jonah was the cause of the storm. Now, now, now let me say this. Let me say this because I don't want to lead you wrong. I don't want you to all be all mixed up. Not every storm has a cause. I'm going to say that again. Not every storm has a cause, but some storms do have a cause. See, see, I don't want you to make a conclusion that every time a storm comes, there's a cause. And you might be done something wrong. Every time trouble comes, I might be I done something. No, no, don't, don't get caught up in that theology. See, because the rain falls on both the just and the unjust. Trouble comes to all of us, no matter what. But in this particular situation, and in this particular story, Jonah made a choice. And when you make a choice, you cannot choose your consequences. Every choice we make has consequences. And we're free to make as whatever choices we want to make. We can choose whatever we want to choose. But we cannot choose the consequences of our choices. And so, Jonah made a choice not to obey God. He made a choice. Instead of running and doing what God told him to do, he tried to run the other way. But God had chosen him. I'm going to say that again. God had chosen him for this particular task. I'm saying something to somebody right now. You, you may not think that you're worth anything. You, you may not think that, 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 that God is calling you but God has called you for a particular task. And he's going to make sure that you do the task that God has called you to do. And so when they cast lots, Jonah's name came up. He was the one and 
the men start interrogating him. Where are you from? Who are you? What is your job? And then Jonah, he just starts spilling the beans. Yeah, man, God told me to go to, to Nineveh. And man, I don't want to go to no Nineveh. I don't like them Ninevites and all them Assyrians. I ain't going to tell them folks because, you know, and we find out later that the reason Jonah didn't want to go and talk, tell them is because he felt that if he told them, they would repent and he really wanted them to die. See, so we have to watch what's going on on the inside of us. When we start being disobedient to God, there's something going on in our hearts that, that, that God wants us to deal with. If God wants us to love on some people, if God wants us to speak to some people, we have to do what God is telling us to do because this thing is about our relationship with him that's our horizontal relation, I mean, our vertical relationship, us and God. And then we have a horizontal relationship where we have relationships with other people. And we are representing God everywhere we go. So we need to go and have a little talk with Jesus and listen to what he's saying and, 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 and be transparent in our hearts. Why, why you don't want to go talk to the Ninevites? Why you don't want to obey what God telling you to do? Really, because you probably got some prejudice in you. You probably got some anger issues in you. You got some unforgiveness in you. You got some bitterness in you. God is trying to get all of that stuff out of Jonah as well as out of us so that we will always do what God wants us to do. And so, the sailors decided, well, we, we, we understand you're Hebrew and we understand you, you fear the Lord, but, but we ain't going to give up on you. So they, they tried their best. Now, that, that's, that's, that's awesome. The, the, the folks that ain't even following God, they, they tried their best to save the man. They tried their best to save Jonah. But the more they tried to do it their way, the stronger the storm got. See, I, I, I could go into some deep stuff. You know, we, we'll have a whole lot of friends trying to tell us how to go about doing this another way. Oh, you ain't got to accept your calling. You, you ain't got to go and tell nobody this. That. You ain't got to live... Go on, no, no, let's do it this way. This is how the world does it. This is how the world does things. And, and if you do it the world's way, it's so much better. No, that ain't, that ain't what God is designed you to do. You got to do it God's way. You can't do it the world's way. And so, after the storm got so bad, even the, the captain and the crew, they decided they, their arms was too short to box with God. They, 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 they decided to start praying to God themselves. I, I always like this part of the story. Listen, listen to verses 14. Therefore, they cried out to the Lord and said, Oh, we pray, O oh Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life. Do not change us, charge us with the innocence of his blood. For you, O oh Lord, have done it and it pleased you. In other words, they saying, God, we give up. We submit to you, whatever you want to do. And so they threw Jonah over into the sea. And the text says, as soon as they threw Jonah over into the sea, the sea cease from raging. Man, you talking about some instant. You do one thing and this thing happens. Oh man, that is awesome. God, God has a way of doing things. And, and we have to trust him and make the right choices. And so, here it is now. Jonah is thrown overboard. And this is the part 
that we all should capture. Now the Lord has prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. God had already prepared a way of escape. Even from my own disobedience. And, 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 and he says, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Can, can I go back up for just a minute to verse 16? Because I, I, I said I'm supposed to talk about this and I just jumped back out. It says, then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. Even when we are disobedient, God can use that to his glory and to his honor. He can work out a situation. You know, and that's what he did for these men. These men came to a knowledge of God because of Jonah's disobedience. And that's how God works. But now let's get into this, this fact that Jonah ended up in the fish. This great fish. This, this is a picture of salvation. This is a picture of God rescuing us. I could hear our text that we had a couple of weeks ago uh, from Romans. It says, in that while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for the ungodly. While we were yet sinners, while we were yet being disobedient, God has a thing that he loves us so much that he's always going to provide a way of escape. He's always going to provide his loving care and salvation to us. All we have to do is accept it. It's hard for us to accept it sometimes because we're always trying to do things our way. And God showed mercy on Jonah. He deserved to get his tail whooped, but, but instead God showed mercy. And he showed grace by providing a way of escape. God disciplined Jonah in love. And we need to realize that sometimes God has to discipline us in love. And when he does, The blessings of the Lord are sure to follow. We have to learn to listen to his guidance, his leading, and his directing. Sometimes he comes in a still small voice. And in the case of Jonah, he came in a big old whale or a big old fish, as, we, as the text says, <laughs> and swallows us up. And holds us for three days until we do and ready to do what the Lord has assigned for us to do. I love this text. I've always loved this text even as a child. Because this, this text really, really blesses us to know that we serve a God that's always in control. God, he can use whomever or whatever he wants to use to get our attention. And when we sin, and when we fall short, and when we're disobedient, it affects our lives, and it affects the lives of others. And God can even use our bad experience to teach us about his disciplinary love as well as his grace. 
when Jonah was eaten by the whale or by the fish, taken in by that big old fish, he stayed in that belly for three days. I don't know if you can hear that that three days, something about them three days. <laughs> Jesus, he wasn't disobedient. He was obedient unto death. But he died for our disobedience, for our sins. And he stayed in that grave three days. Stayed in the belly of this old earth for three days. And God got him up out of that grave with all power in heaven and earth in his hands that we might be saved because of God, Jesus' resurrection. Because of Jonah's resurrection, we can all be raised from the dead and be willing to leave this life of disobedience and then have a life of obedience to God and follow him and let him lead and guide and direct us and be our global positioning satellite. Let the Holy Spirit just move on you to tell you what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And be willing to submit and obey so you don't have to hear. In, in, in three miles, make a U-turn. In 300 feet, make a U-turn. In 300 feet, make a U-turn. Whenever you get a chance, make a U-turn. You don't have to keep hearing that all the time. That's how the, the navigation systems tell you when you miss the mark. Just follow, turn right, turn left, stop here, stop there, go there. Just do what God is saying do. The old songwriter says, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. In conclusion, God loves us. Even when we're disobedient and do wrong, he still loves us. But God will correct us because he loves us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the plan you have for our lives. Help us. To do what you want us to do. Help us, oh Lord, to be what you designed us to be. Help us, oh God, to live our purpose to your glory and to your honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Before I end the message, I always like to pray the prayer of salvation with those that are listening to this broadcast now and those that are listening to this broadcast later. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward, please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. God bless you on Facebook and God keep you. Um, if you want to join us in the overtime to discuss the lesson, you can call our conference call number. It's 910 218 Zero five three one again nine one zero two one eight zero five three one and on the conference call in overtime we'll talk about the lesson some more pray for one another and just have fellowship be blessed on Facebook see you next Sunday.